Well, tissue engineering, uh, a lot of it started with studies that uh, Jay Vacanti, who's now head of pediatric surgery at Mass General, and I did many, many years ago, and many other people have contributed to it as well. The fundamental idea of tissue engineering is combining materials and cells, mammalian cells, including stem cells, together to form a new tissue or organ. There's uh, uh, several strategies that uh, we and others have been working on. Uh, one strategy, is, uh, which maybe will be useful in diabetes, is the idea that you could take a cell type like islet cell and encapsulate it with material that will prevent immune rejection. And so the way you do that is you have a material, which could be like an alginate or something, and you take the cells, you take the material like the alginate, you put it in water, and then you put it in a syringe and you shoot it into a calcium bath which is a certain type of ion, and that causes a gelation. So you get these beads, and the beads have a certain pore size. And the point is the cells are inside those beads. And so what happens is, I'll, I'll just pick diabetes for example, is insulin can go through one way and glucose can go through the other way. And antibodies and immune cells are too big to get through. So it's actually protected from the body. So the idea is that you could have this little artificial pancreas in the microcapsule, um, and, and, and that's been one very exciting area. One of the challenges, however, in that area is sometimes you can get fibrous encapsulation ar around those microcapsules, and that could shut off the insulin and glucose. So one of the big efforts in our laboratory with Dan Anderson has been to develop what I'll call super biocompatible materials that will not get encapsulated. And we're now uh, working with the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation in uh, primate trials, uh, monkey trials to see how well we're able to do. So that's an example of, of a set of materials that might be useful. A second area in tissue engineering is actually, you could have what I'll call this a polymer scaffold, which could be in any shape. You could put cells on it. And once the cells are there, they actually organize themselves to create a new tissue or organ. Could be new cartilage, bone, could be human skin for burn victims or patients with diabetic skin ulcers. So the challenge is A, designing the right material that cells will stick to, B, making the right what I'll call construct, which is in the right shape and the right organization. For example, if you're gonna make cartilage, maybe you'd wanna make it in the form of a nose or you might wanna make it in the form of an ear, depending on what the goals are. Um, and, um, and, 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 and you also might want to impart special properties to the polymer, like elasticity or, or other kinds of things. So then uh, you take the cells and you'd uh, put them on the polymer, grow them, and make that tissue. Already this has led to new uh, skin for burn victims. It's leading to new uh, um, entities in various clinical trials, including new cartilage, new corneas, uh, possibly spinal cord repair. Uh, but it's a very, very broad area that's affecting many different things. Materials end up being critical to a lot of these things, both from the standpoint of the chemistry and the processing. In, this, in the case of the chemistry, uh, I would, I'll, I'll just list some materials that we've been trying to make and that others are and that may be useful. One, can you come up with materials that are biocompatible but can be ionically cross-linked? to address the diabetes problem. Two, can you make materials that have uh, particular amino acids heading out from them that are gonna be helpful for attachment of certain cells, like say nerve cells? Three, can you um, make materials that have the right kind of elasticity? Because some of the parts of our body, like blood vessels or ureters, are very elastic. Four, um, can you make materials that might enable cells, including stem cells, to do what's called differentiate, meaning to change, into whatever cell type you want? And there are other materials challenges as well on the chemistry. On the manufacturing, there are a lot of different challenges. How do you make something into the right shape, into the right form? And some of this has to, so, so there's a variety of different techniques people are using. One very popular technique that's gotten a lot of, of attention lately is three-dimensional printing, 3D printing, because that gives you the ability to make certain types of intricate structures. 
but there are many others too. There's different ways of making foams, of making fibers, of making uh, nano pattern systems. So there are many, many different materials challenges, both from the standpoint of the chemistry and the manufacturing and, and engineering. Well, there are a lot of challenges. I mean, from the material side, number one, you want to make sure that the materials are safe. And sometimes you're dealing with new chemistry and you don't know until you test it. Secondly, you want to make sure that um, the materials interact with cells well and do, do what you want. Third, uh, you want to make sure in many cases that the materials biodegrade, that they go away because you really don't want them there forever. You want them to do their job and then, and then disappear. And then of course when you combine the materials with cells, that could lead to all kinds of issues, you know, and you uh, want to make sure that you don't get uh, a, a tissue response or other kinds of things that might be negative. I would say that tissue engineering is more experimental and theoretical at this point. I mean, there is some theoretical work, but it's still not that well understood how to make a new tissue or organ. So a lot of it's experimentation with different materials, different cell types, uh, different ways of growing the cells, different animal studies, and in some cases, human studies. I think we just don't know. The reason I think we can't do things theoretically in tissue engineering in some cases is we just don't know enough. For example, immune rejection or, or why does a biomaterial get encapsulated? I don't think we know enough or we don't know enough what, is, what are the structures that cause that to happen. You know, I'd say that that's been a, something that we, we just sadly don't know enough about. So if we don't know enough, it's a largely empiricism. I think to use computers well enough in biology, you need to know a good deal. See, I think you can use computers to unlock the human genome because I think people have developed good sequencing machines and good enough understanding of what to do. But I think when something is a biological process that's not well understood, then I think it's very, very hard to use computers because you just don't know what to tell the computer. So I'd say a number of people, uh, including ourselves, are working on creating new tissues. You can make new skin now. Uh, I think we can probably do better if we understand things better, but already new skins are being used for patients with, that are burned or, and have diabetic skin ulcers. We're also looking at, can you make new cartilage? Can you make new intestine? Can you make new vocal cord? Can you make new spinal cord? I think there are a lot of big challenges that, uh, that, that, that need to be solved. I mean, that, that we're working on and that other people are working on. Let me pick the encapsulation area of, diab of, of pancreatic cells. I mean, there, the number one challenge that you face is if you encapsulate the cells with a polymer, is you will get a, a tissue response to it. And, and, and that's really a big challenge because that will shut off the diffusion of molecules in and out of the capsule so that even if you were able to produce insulin, it would never get out. So the big challenge is coming up with materials that are highly biocompatible, so there will be no tissue response, or somehow making sure that, that you don't get that fibrous encapsulation. The people that work in the field of tissue engineering actually have many different backgrounds. They might be chemical engineers, they might be biologists, they might be material scientists, they might be surgeons, uh, they might be uh, cell biologists. So it's actually a very interdisciplinary field. So I, I think it's been very good. I think one type of person learns from another, that a chemical engineer learns from a biologist, and a biologist learns from the chemical engineer. I'm very excited about the area of tissue engineering. I think the pos there, there's so many diseases that you can't treat with a drug. So if you could help people with liver failure or spinal cord repair, you know, or, di or certain types of diabetes, I think it would just be a wonderful thing. And I think the science that's going on in this area is, is, is very exciting. You know, there's wonderful biology, you know, new stem cell biology, there's terrific material science going on. So I think from both a scientific standpoint and a medical standpoint, this is an area that's of, of great importance. <music>